Okay, we're now on the underneath of the guitar. And the first thing we can look at is that they've used a lot of the original components from the Fender 400, eight, uh, 1000 and 2000 series, especially the likes of the leg connectors. The other thing that's interesting, they've also used the top part of the bell crank of the Fender 1000, 2000 and 400, 800 series. The other thing that's very interesting is the pedals themselves are in a V-slot and by undoing screws underneath the pedal you can space the pedal pedals out at different spacings so you can have a set of three pedals and four pedals or with a space between them or you can change the overall spacing as you wish. Also the pedal rack uh, is connected to the legs in a very unusual way in a very quick release way using a standard butterfly catch that we get on flight cases and a, a small bracket actually welded onto the leg. So that's the leg. Turn it round this way so we can see. There you go with that bracket welded onto it. Once you've got the position correct. So that's the way the leg is held with a butterfly catch just clipped like that. The rods have the normal fender connections on the bell crank with two different positions for altered leverage. They connect the normal way, which is kind of awkward one handed. With it. So, the legs themselves, standard fender legs with standard fender clutches, which we'll discuss in a while. The guitar came standard with one knee lever, and Fender said you could have any number of knee levers, but to do that you had to sacrifice pedals. So it was either eight pedals and one knee lever, or seven pedals and two, and so on. The reason being, there are only nine actual actuators on the changer system. And the way that works is unique. First of all, after the pedal and the bell crank, it goes to this end actuator here, which is on a knife edge, and you've got all of the different points for different amounts of leverage and distance movements. The actual way it works is quite straightforward. It's suspended in a frame and the knife edge is there. So when it's pulled, the end of its travel is governed by that slot there. So the pedal comes up against a solid stop. Like so. That's a solid stop for the pedal travel. It pulls this rod. All of these rods are connected together with just knife edges, no rivets. So that there again is a connection just in a slot on the knife edge. Down to here we have a return spring that keeps it in that position. So that's how that moves. We're not taking it any further than that at the moment. This is the actuator for the nearest neck and that's the furthest neck obviously. Um, and the way the system changes from neck to neck is with the lever that actually moves that whole system that way or that way to engage that way engages that one and this way will engage this one 
the reason that that's going that way there is no adjustment set up on that now Fender had this system whereby it was only because there are only nine actuators there we've only got nine and there's only nine here so it's eight and one but myself and Ron Bennett found a way around that to an extent okay the singular pedals all that they do to get the knee levers to work uh, this system here is reversed turned over and inserted the other way around and connected up to a knee lever and it operates the system pulling the bottom bar of these or whichever ones it's connected to in turn as I say they pull the system here that pulls against your actual fingers and we should go into what they do in a moment but first of all the knee levers they're actually mounted in a t-slot along the guitar and just held in with a Allen key machine screw and a square nut inside the T-slot and you can slide the knee levers backwards and forwards adjusting the rod lengths to suit whatever position you want the knee lever in. I presume you could also move the knee levers in and out by using a larger boss at the bottom of them. So the knee levers are also configurable lengthways along the guitar and possibly inwards depending. On the changeover side of the system, oh no I'll go back with the knee levers first, um, Ron Brennan and myself figured out a way to bypass the fender limitations, albeit only on one neck. But we wanted to keep the eight pedals and the one knee lever, but we needed a couple more. So what we did was divide the linkage whereby the knee lever pulled it directly onto the system, not via the normal transfer that goes neck to neck. Because in this position, with this knee lever that's connected to the original fender system, that knee lever changes to whatever neck. With When you change over, it will work the far neck now. So, that was difficult. We couldn't add another plates there to take it to more than nine so we thought right well we'll get the knee levers working on one neck so what we did we made we devised a system using the same original fender components uh, harvested from other fender guitars but i've stayed with the original fender connectors and we devised a system where we pulled directly there that one directly from directly from the knee lever and the other one uh, going in the opposite direction we had to transfer the pull so it was done up there like that and again pulling directly and we drilled holes through there the problem there was it was quite difficult because that is case hardened steel and it was quite difficult to drill through anyway back to the mechanics of the guitar when you change from one neck to the other the pedals are now on the nearest neck there's a switch there that switch is wired up to the pickup system and the pickups are switched individually via that switch to whatever neck you're on so when you change to the top neck that switch is actuated by the same lever and it changes the pickups to the other neck. The output socket is facing downwards which was quite smart in those days and this here is a bypass for the switch system so all you do is put your hand under the guitar, press that and now you've got both necks on. In the one position the pickups are selected by whatever neck the pedals are switched to. In the other position both necks are turned on. We've got a volume and tone control at the end of the guitar and then we'll look at the way the mechanism actually actuates. We'll look at the tuning later on which is the keyless system but the way the mechanism actually actuates and that is fairly straightforward. <laughs> 